This is Guinea, one of the largest producers of cashew. Hello, welcome to Open Tierra. Today we're looking at a West African country known for its colorful culture and diverse landscapes. Guinea-Bissau gained independence from Portugal in 1974 and is characterized by its blend of Portuguese colonial influences and rich indigenous traditions. Watch till the end to discover more about Guinea-Bissau's unique cultural heritage and its breathtaking beauty. Guinea-Bissau is a small coastal country located on the Atlantic coast of West Africa. Its geography ranges from mangrove swamps to tropical forests. It sits on the far western coast of Africa, bordering Senegal and Guinea. It has three main geographical regions. The coastal clay plains cover much of the country. The forested highlands lie in the east and south. The northern savanna region borders Senegal. Guinea-Bissau has a tropical climate with distinct rainy and dry seasons. The rainy season lasts from June to October, with heavier rains in August and September. The dry season runs from November to May. Temperatures remain hot all year. Major rivers include the Cacho, Geba and Korobal rivers, which have mangrove estuaries along the coast. Guinea-Bissau relies on fishing and cashew production for most of its income. Timber, diamonds, oil and bauxite are also present in unexploited quantities. Guinea-Bissau's coastal waters and tropical forests sustain diverse flora and fauna. Key species include chimpanzees, African forest elephants, hippos, crocodiles and olive ridley sea turtles. Unregulated logging and poaching threaten its biodiversity. Guinea-Bissau has a history shaped by colonialism, revolution and political instability since independence. The area that is now Guinea-Bissau was once part of the ancient Mali and Ghana empires. Portuguese traders arrived in the 15th century and began slave trading posts along the coast. In the 19th century, Guinea-Bissau became a Portuguese colony called Portuguese Guinea. In 1956, Amilcar Cabral founded the African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde, or Pike Party, to resist Portuguese rule. After a brutal war, Guinea-Bissau finally declared independence in 1973, with Cabral as president. However, he was assassinated in 1974. After independence, Guinea-Bissau experienced continuing political upheaval. A military coup took place in 1980. In 1994, a civil war erupted between competing political factions that only ended in 1999 after intervention by other African states. Despite some progress, Guinea-Bissau has been plagued by further coups and instability. The military has remained influential in politics. However, recent elections have helped restore legitimate constitutional government. Guinea-Bissau has significant challenges to overcome the legacy of authoritarian rule, political fragmentation and poverty. But the resilience of its people provides hope that stability and development can be achieved. Guinea-Bissau's population reflects its diverse ethnic, religious and linguistic composition. The World Bank estimates that its total population is about 2.1 million as of 2022. The main ethnic groups in Guinea-Bissau are the Balanta and Fula, each representing around one-third of the population. Other major groups are the Mandinka and Papel. There is also a small European minority. Intermarriage between different ethnic groups is common. The population of Guinea-Bissau is predominantly Muslim, with over 45% following Islam. Traditional African religions are the second largest faith, while Christianity is practiced by about 10%. Many people also incorporate traditional beliefs into their Islamic or Christian worship. Portuguese is the official language and linguistic medium of Guinea-Bissau, reflecting its colonial heritage. However, native languages are more widely spoken. 
especially by ethnic communities. These include Balanta, Pular, Mandinka, and many other languages. Guinea-Bissau has a small developing economy dependent on agriculture and fishing. The World Bank estimates its GDP to be about $1.6 billion. Political instability has hindered economic growth since independence. Under Portuguese colonial rule, Guinea-Bissau was largely exploited for its raw materials. Since independence in 1974, political turmoil and civil war have disrupted economic development. Guinea-Bissau remains one of the poorest and least developed countries in the world. The economy saw a modest rebound in the 2000s before being impacted by the global financial crisis. Agriculture employs over 80% of the workforce and drives the economy. Cashew nuts are the main export crop. Rice, peanuts, cotton and timber are also important. However, production levels are low due to poor infrastructure and supply chains. Fishing is the second major industry, with shrimp being the primary export. Overfishing and illegal foreign trawlers depleting fish stocks are major challenges facing the sector. Guinea-Bissau has untapped reserves of oil, gas, minerals and ores, which could drive economic expansion if extracted sustainably. Expanding cash crops like cashews and modernizing the agriculture sector are other growth opportunities. Portugal retains some economic and cultural influence as Guinea-Bissau joined the community of Portuguese language countries. The country is also a member of the economic community of West African states. This gives it access to regional markets and security assistance against coups and conflicts. Senegal is an important neighbor and trade partner. However, border disputes over the Casamance region have caused tensions with Senegal over the years. Due to weak law enforcement, Guinea-Bissau has become a drug trafficking hub between Latin America and Europe. There are many distinct ethnic groups, each with their own cultural practices. These include initiation rites, masks, dances, music, arts and oral storytelling traditions. The Balanta, Fula and Mandinka groups have particularly rich cultures. The Portuguese colonial legacy is evident in the official language, architecture, food, music and religious practices. These coexist and mix with native traditions in a unique cultural fusion. Guinea-Bissau has produced renowned artists and writers. Authors like Amilcar Cabral and the director Flora Gomes have found international acclaim. Traditional music uses drums, xylophones and the gongoma luti. Popular folk genres include gumbe, tina and tinga. Contemporary dance and music add modern elements to traditional forms. Guinea-Bissau's cuisine reflects its diverse history and mix of African, Portuguese and Creole influences. Rice is a staple, complemented by fish, meat and tropical produce. As a coastal country, seafood features prominently in Guinea-Bissau's cuisine. Palm oil, peppers, peanuts and cassava are also common ingredients. Dishes are often stewed or roasted over open fires. Rice is served with most meals. Yolof rice is a one-pot rice dish, flavored with tomatoes, onions, spices and meat or fish. It originated in Senegal, but is now popular across West Africa. The Guinean version uses local spices like nutmeg and hot green peppers. Caldo. This staple stew contains fish, meat or prawns cooked with palm oil, onions, chili peppers and other vegetables. Variants include caldo de mandoma with peanut sauce and caldo de abobora with pumpkin. Funge is a thick cassava polenta eaten with stews and sauces. The cassava root is pounded and then stirred into boiling water to create the firm, sticky texture of this carbohydrate staple. Bolinhos de peixe. These fish cakes are made from minced bonga fish, 
mixed with onions, garlic, parsley, and peppers, then deep fried into fritter balls. It makes a tasty appetizer or snack. If you enjoyed this video on Guinea-Bissau, you'll love this next one.